Many thanks for joining us here on News Today to our very first story this afternoon. The government has announced plans to relocate residents of Fuwame, a community in the Volta region currently being washed away due to the rising sea level. Two weeks ago, more than 30 homes were submerged permanently as the sea took over more land. Municipal Chief Executive of Keta, Sylvester Tonyega, tells Joy News that more than 1,000 residents will be moved by next month. We are so much, as an assembly, we are so much concerned about people and also concern about the, the reduction in size of Angola land. Because uh, as Pokemon has gone, it means that our land has been reduced. Uh, Puvama is also going, we are concerned. Uh, but the most concern that we, uh, we raised was uh, the human life. Schools have been affected, so last week, the executive committee met of the assembly and then we took a decision. A seven member committee was uh, put up to look at resettlement issues. So a land was identified, we, we asked them to, uh, to, to look for the owners of that land and they'll negotiate. Uh, because it's a temporary issue, uh, we are looking at a permanent solution to the problem. So we are expecting them two weeks, three weeks, they should bring us a report. Uh, where a temporary structure for the school also will be so that schools are not unduly interrupted. The academic uh, life of the, the people uh, will not be unduly affected. And the people too will not be so much displaced. So it is our hope that uh, by early next month we should uh, find a way of resettling the people. How far away are you relocating them from their native communities? It is not very far. Uh, we, you know, if you travel from uh, Achiteti, you go to a community called Agokeji before Puvema. So there is a parcel of land uh, between uh, Achiteti and then uh, Puvema, okay. where exactly, which is closer to Agokeji. And, that, that area. And the people have agreed to go from yes, your negotiations? they prefer that place because it doesn't change uh, whatever uh, uh, profession or whatever they do uh, for living. It will not change because they are still in between the sea and then the lagoon, the, the, the river. But the residents are unhappy about the plants. They say government should rather construct a sea defense wall to protect them. Next two months, uh, next month, uh, the situation will be worse because there that we are entering into the rough time, rough season of the sea. So if the government have done nothing about it, it will be worse than what we are seeing right now. But I can, I can, be, I can bet on it. Within two months, if they have done nothing about it, then the whole community will submit into the sea. Would you be ready to relocate from here because it looks like the sea is coming? We cannot go to anywhere. Why about 1,000 people? Why, why, are they, why are we going? Where are we going? We are, we are fish apples and we are living here. They are saying that we should go and settle at different places. We can't go to any place. We cannot survive over there. Do you rather live here and die, probably? We can't die. We can't die. Government should do something about it so that we won't die. What would the young government to do? Say defense. Say defense. That's the best solution about the, the situation. That's the only solution government can do about this situation. We want government to come and defend the area for us. With the construction of uh, and the sea defense, sea. yeah. Or uh, they can do grand uh, in the sea. Or uh, they can break the water for us so that the sea will not have the upper hand on us. Uh, the yeah. government have abandoned us. So, since we have been voting for this and, and this city are better, they are not doing anything to this community. Even the school too, uh, is the community that is building it for them, themselves. The government is not doing anything at all to this village. The people are in the village are very, very fed up. They don't know what to do now. So if you don't do this thing for us, if you don't know what will happen, let me tell you. The, the only solution is that uh, a downside of the estuary is protected. They should have done that during the time of constructing that side. So that the voter side, which is the Achitati side, Puverme, Achitati Puverme side, should also be protected into the deep sea as they have done at Ada then the problem ends. Like uh, all these areas will not be suffering for any uh, uh, tidal erosion or tidal uh, uh, this thing, flooding.
no, it will not happen again. This place will become very cool, calm and all sorts of things. The Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority says drivers must prioritize the routine maintenance of their vehicles. Director in charge of the Greater Accra Region at the 37 Office, Noah Tetemati, cautioned drivers against waiting for law enforcement agents to point out faults on their vehicles before going to fix them. You're speaking on the AM show hosted by Mama Vyoso Boji and Roland Walker. We as drivers and vehicle owners, we need to be a little bit responsible. Please, do we have to wait until a policeman comes before you go to repair your faulty headlights? Do we have to uh, see the policeman on the road before we do the right thing? What about your responsibility also? No, we, our responsibility as an authority, that's BVLA, we issue driver's license, we issue roadworthiness certificates. These two things, as of now, we do it and do it diligently. Formerly, it was the Accra for instance, 37 office alone that was issuing roadway certificates. Mm. Now, we have seen the essence of trying to uh, widen the scope and also making sure that vehicles are tested and tested properly. So now we have brought in private testing stations to help us do this. And for now, for now, vehicles that ply our road or vehicles that have genuine roadway certificate go through thorough test. Mm. How do you do your coordination um, with, with, with the other partners? Because it's critical. Really, it is. Because you give a, a roadway certificate today and tomorrow the car is involved in an accident. Um, as at now, the DVLA has got a task force unit. You do? Yes, we do. When did you start the operating that? Oh, that has been some time. It's, it's been a long time now. Tell us about it. The task force unit goes with the MTTD, National Road Safety Committee. Now, what we do is, every week, we go out onto the road three times every week. And when we go around, we check regular vehicles, we check those who drive without license, we check those who drive with underweight license. And for some time now, this task force operation has been working and it's really helping. Well, that is what we do with uh, other stakeholders to bring sanity onto the road. Watching news today here on Joe News, we're taking a break. We'll return shortly with some more news. Don't go away. Many thanks for staying with us here on News Today to some more stories. Now this time, let's turn our attention to politics. And the Electoral Commission of Ghana has been given a 14-day ultimatum to respond to a suit challenging the eligibility of some names on the existing electoral roll. A member of the NPP, Kwame Boafu, filed the rate on Friday. is seeking 10 reliefs from the defendants, which also includes an order compelling the defendants to compile a new and credible National Voters Register for use in the 2016 general elections in Ghana. Let's get more on this from correspondent Precious Semebo joins me over the telephone lines now. So Precious, uh, tell us much more about the reliefs being sought by this gentleman. We are told there are about 10 reliefs. Uh, can you run us through them? Yes, uh, there are about 10 reliefs and uh, the plaintiff is the uh, youth organizer of the New Patriotic Party in the Bronga Hapo region. Now, among the situation that the current out by the defendants and intended to be used for the 2016 general elections in Ghana is bloated and hence unfit for the use for the general election. Also, uh, by the defendants and intended to be used for the elections and that contains names of foreigners and minors. Oh, uh. Apologies there, we seem to have lost our correspondent, Precious Semevo, over, uh, who joined us over the telephone lines now a brief while ago. We'll try and work the lines once more. When we have him, we'll bring that story back to you. But let's still stay with politics, like I mentioned. And the uh, Minister for Employment and Labor Relations, Haruna Idrisu, is urging the Electoral Commission of Ghana 
to fast track a constitutional amendment process to pave way for the November 7 election. The amendment, according to Harun Idrisu, will allow for proper transition after the electoral process and help resolve any disputes in time. Rafiq Salam has more. Addressing supporters of the National Democratic Congress, NDC, at a program organized by the World Central Constituency Youth Wing of the Party, Employment and Labor Relations Minister Harun Idrisu stated that he has no scintilla of doubt that Ghanaians will retain John Dramani Mahama as the country's president in the 2016 polls. He said Ghanaians will vote for the party based on the prudent economic policies currently pursued by the government, which he considered are bitter pills to swallow, but was quick to add that it will surely put smiles on the faces of Ghanaians in the end. However, he asked supporters of the party to ensure that the party wins all ballot boxes in the 2016 election. All of you here can declare John Muhammad will win on one condition, that you will win your ballot box for John Muhammad. Nothing more. So anybody who loves our party, who loves President Muhammad, who loves the NDC, I'm simply launching operation win your ballot box for a renewed term of President John Dramani Mahama. So whatever you have, is it resources, is it strength, is it prayers, make sure you narrow it to your ballot box. Once he's winning every ballot box, he's winning. The Labor Relations and Employment Minister used the occasion to urge the Electoral Commission to quicken and wake up with government for the appropriate amendment to the constitution to be made to pave way for the November 7th election. We need to do a review because you are changing from 7th December to uh, 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 7th November. And even more importantly, a more important constitutional amendment will be to limit how many days and how long anybody can challenge an election outcome. We all saw the experience where we, as a country, we spent eight, nine months in the Supreme Court. I think that part of the constitutional amendment, which we all must push, is that within a certain period, maybe seven to 21 days, if you have complaint, file. If you don't have complaint, keep quiet. And let the outcome and the sovereign will of the people of Ghana prevail. The program brought together for the first time two of the aspirants in the West Central constituency who took part in the November NDC parliamentary primaries. Dr. Rashid Pelpo won the election, but later fell out with Dr. Musebu Mohamed Alpha, who placed second fiddle to him. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam. Wa. Okay, and here in Accra, my name is Kwab not change anybody in any way. But let's still go back to that very story we brought to you a while ago about uh, the Electoral Commission being given a two-week ultimatum to file a defense following uh, a decision by one member of the opposition MPP to go to court over the existing voters register. Joining me now in studio to help us understand really uh, what it is, the particular situation, is my colleague and uh, a member of our political desk here at Joinis Kwachia Fernyama. Who is here now with hello so Kwachi, uh, thanks for joining us. So, uh, what's the basis of this suit in the first place? Well, uh, first of all, Mr. Kwame Bafo, who is a national youth organizer of the MPP in the Bonohaf region, says that uh, he's convinced that when uh, the Justice VCRAC Crab Committee presented its recommendations to the Electoral Commission, one of the key points that they, they, they made, one of the key proposals was that the entire register should uh, be, be reviewed. A, a second point he makes is that having spent a huge chunk of the taxpayers' money uh, on the operations of this uh, committee, this panel of experts, and the, the, the composition of that, com composing that committee, mm -hmm. he believes that the, the Electoral Commission must certainly uh, ensure that that money was not, was, was not wasted. The Electoral Commission must, do, must act uh, based on the recommendations of the VCRAC uh, committee. He also talks about the fact that this independent auditor that the Electoral Commission says that they have contracted to, to audit the voters register. It not, lacks the credibility, in fact. And, and I, I'm sure you remember that when the New Patriotic Party presented the official position on this matter, the recommendations of the committee, that was one of the key issues that they raised, that they were, they as political parties, were not even consulted uh, on that as well. Mr. Kwame Bafu believes that this uh, auditor lacks the credibility 
to do that job. Okay. Now, uh, in his rates, he he seeks about 10 reliefs or so. I mean, what are these reliefs he's seeking? Uh, the, 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 the key ones, uh, he talks about the fact that the voters register contains names of minors, also contains names of uh, foreigners. And in fact, that's uh, one of the issues that the MPP raised as well. More than 76,000 Togolese nationals, they, they, they think, based on their investigations on the voters register. He, he feels that on this basis, the, the, the voters register is not fit for purpose. Secondly, he talks about the controversial uh, Supreme Court ruling on the Abu Ramadan case mm -hmm. of national health insurance uh, card holders, some foreigners being able to access, uh, have their names there because they, they had their NHI card. He says that on this basis as well, the uh, Supreme Court should declare uh, once again that we cannot use this uh, voters register for the 2016 election. Okay, Afre, uh, just hold on briefly because I know you're also in court and uh, let's move to that court. So in an Accra High Court has thrown out a motion filed by NDC Clote Kole parliamentary candidate Dr. Zaneto Rollins to strike out the case challenging her candidate. Dr. Zaneto Rollins has been sued by incumbent MP for the area, Niyama Ashite. According to Mr. Ashite, uh, Dr. Dr. Zaneto Rollins is not a registered voter, hence does not qualify to contest for the position of a member of parliament. Kwachia Freenema was in court and uh, still has a lot more on that as well. So, uh, really, tell us about what happened. I know you did speak to uh, the you did speak to both parties, but in essence, why did the courts throw out this case? Well, uh, Dr. Uh, Zaneto is being challenged by Niyama Ashite and one other person, as you mentioned. Uh, Mr. Ashite, the incumbent member of parliament, uh, again feels that Zaneto did not even qualify to contest for this poll in the uh, in the first place to have been elected as parliamentary candidate of the NDC in that area. But uh, Dr. Zanetto's lawyers filed a motion challenging that and they asked the court to throw it out entirely. But in court today, uh, the, 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 the high court thought that first of all, the procedure uh, by which lawyers for Dr. Zanetto filed the, the case in court and how they presented they, they presented it to the court was not uh, appropriate. The court also thought that it was premature because they did not wait to hear from lawyers for Dr. Niyama Niyamashite before they, they went ahead to file this motion to strike the case out. So okay. what it means is that and in, in the view of the court, this entire motion lacked merit okay and you did speak to both parties like i mentioned earlier uh, what what did they say well first uh, dr zanetta rollins says that she is not perturbed by all that is happening she would have wished ordinarily that the matter was not in court but uh, even though it's in court now it's not affecting a campaign in any way okay can, maybe we can take a listen to that now going so we're just waiting to see how it goes Mm. Um, it looks like uh, this is a blow to you. Um, I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say so. The case, because the case isn't over yet. You can't say it's a blow until it's over. And we don't know that for sure, do we? Are you confident of winning the case? Yes. I mean, this, this is taking away to take it to a campaign time. Is it Allow the court to take it to a cost. We make, we make good use of the time that we have. So um, we just keep going. So this is not distracting you in any way? I wouldn't say so. It would be better not to have it, but if it's here, we deal with it and we move on. So that was Dr. Zanetto Rollins speaking there to the media after that particular court hearing. Coach Efren is still here with me. So uh, we had Dr. Zanetto Rollins. Uh, how about Niyama Shite? Well, since this, he, he, he took this particular matter to court, we've heard some say that he's simply a bad loser. He rejects all those criticisms. Okay. Well, I mean, we're talking about law. Okay, and uh, uh, you can see uh, that there was a very comprehensive ruling that touched on the heart of the matter. That now that their application had been dismissed, we are now moving to the next stage with a motion for an injunction to stop the lady from doing any campaign. And then we are going to finally decide whether whether she really is a registered voter. And that's it. Some say you, you, you lost this election. Why don't you... I didn't, lose that, I didn't lose that election. You didn't lose? I didn't lose it. I didn't lose it. What, then what happened? Well, the point is that the, the woman was not qualified to stand. She was not qualified to stand. So, you tell those who say you're a bad loser? I'm not a bad. She is also... Well, I don't want to use wrong words. I didn't lose that election. We are in court. We've come to court. You were in the courtroom. A ruling has been made. We are going on. On. That's it. 
How That's do you it. feel about this ruling? This well, it's good for good for democracy, democracy, good for rule of law. That's it. They are confident of winning their case at the end. Oh, of course. What is left now is about determination of whether the lady is a registered voter. That's all. From what you heard in court, do yeah. you think your case will be upheld? I am saying that what is left now is a determination of whether the lady is a registered voter. That's it. How far are you willing to go to, to push, get to the bottom of this matter? Oh, we, 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 step by step, step by step. We'll go as far as we can. Yeah. Okay, so that's, uh, that was incumbent <coughs> member parliament for Klote Kole, Ni Ama Ashiti there. But uh, Afre, just before you go, I know there was also another uh, case in court about Citizen Ghana movement and this bus branding uh, saga. Uh, what came out of that? Well, like what Occupy Ghana has also filed in court, Citizen Ghana uh, movement is asking the government to publish the full details, among others indeed, publish the full details of the uh, Attorney General's report on, on this matter that saw uh, the eventual resignation of uh, Transport Minister uh, Jifa Atevo. They, we understand that the Attorney General uh, Department have filed their response now, so the court had to adjourn the matter for hearing to begin uh, fully on this uh, case at the next hearing. Mm. Speaking to lawyers for Citizen Ghana Movement after this whole thing, I mean, what did they say? Well, they are they are satisfied with how the process has gone so far. We know this was filed some weeks ago. Okay. Nana Kwesiewa, one of the legal representatives for uh, Citizen Ghana Movement, says that uh, they are confident that at the end of the day, the court will rule uh, certainly in their favor. Okay. Spot or the Attorney General's office and so what we did was to activate the rules of court in order to proceed with the matter. So we filed um, an application to set the matter down for hearing, uh, which was scheduled for today. And so today we came to court only to um, meet the, a rep, a senior state attorney from the Attorney General's department, who then informed us, it was in open court that we got to learn that they had filed an affidavit in opposition to our application um, and the judge informed us that this affidavit in opposition was filed on the 19th of February this year and we had not even been served and so um, we are taking steps to be served with that uh, affidavit in opposition and then also the issue of a preliminary legal objection came up which is that the, the Attorney General is saying that we should have come by writ instead of an application. And so the judge has asked us to write written submissions, uh, put down legal arguments on that, file simultaneously, and then we are back in court on the 9th of March where the judge will make a decision on that, on the preliminary legal objection before we proceed to the substantive matter under Article 21-1F of the 1992 Constitution. But were you surprised that um, well, we were not surprised because. Um... And that was a legal representative for Citizen Ghana Movements there, Nana Kwesi Ewa. You're still watching News Today here on Joe. News time now for some business with John and Marco when we return. And now from the courtroom, let's do some business. From next month, ADB will have a new managing director. The outgoing boss of Zenit Bank, Daniel Asiedu, takes over from Steve Proji. But what challenges is Mr. Asiedu likely to deal with, especially in the first 100 days in office? George Rafe has more. Mr. Asiedu is taking over this position after an extensive search by the ADB board following the immediate MD of that institution, Steve Proji, not to seek an extension of his contract. For many, Mr. Siedu, who is seen as a prim and proper, as well as an astute accountant who always has his eyes on the numbers, might have a lot on his plate. First on his list to be the workers at ADB. That is how he manages to bring all the perceived factions and camps and even the unions at the work together to work towards a common goal. Now, the real test for Mr. Siedu will be his approach in dealing with the current labor issues that are in court against management. Will he seek an out-of-court settlement? 
or fight it out with some of the workers. Again, restoring customer confidence in the bank could be another challenge that the incoming ADB MD might have to address. This is because the recent challenges with the bank has led to some of the customers raise questions about the future of the institution. Also, what strategies will Mr. Siedu come up with to improve ADB stated capital or liquidity or what some might say the amount of money has available to lend to customers? And whether his appointment could be a good omen for the ongoing initial public offering, which is expected to end this week. For a lot of industry watchers, apart from the workers, another challenge that the ADB boss will be faced with will be the perceived government interference in state banks like ADB. And whether Mr. Siedu will be his own man with the full support from the board to bring about the transformation that everyone is looking forward to, or government through the shareholders will again have its way. And the country has no option but to pay much, atten much more attention to adding more value to its commodities. That's the advice from the chief executive of the Institute of Certified Economics, Ghana, Daniel Amate Enim. This follows the latest report by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, which cited Ghana among countries projected to witness slow economic growth because of their overdependence on primary commodities. The fall in the price of gold, cocoa and oil in the last few months is already taking a negative toll on the economy. But Mr. Amate Enim believes this could be mitigated if more value is added to the commodities. We should begin to diversify our commodities. We should begin to add value to whatever we, 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 we produce so that we don't just send raw materials to the international market. We should begin to uh, add value to it. Apart from aside this, we should also integrate our economies within the sub-region. What it means is that we should be able to uh, trade among ourselves. So that, for instance, if we add value to cocoa, we should be able to, let's say we added value to cocoa, chocolate, milo, and the rest, we should be able to sell it within the sub-region and even sell less cocoa beans to the global market in that, uh, that will limit the, 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 the supply and, of course, it will trigger high demand for, for the beans. And that will be it for business. But for more, just join me around 1 o'clock for more on Marketplace here. My name is John Kojo Amako. Bye-bye. That's it for news today this afternoon here on Joy News. My name is Kwabna Chenche Henibwati. Remember to log on to myjoyonline.com for more news. John Marco is standing by with the marketplace. Many thanks for your company.